Hello fellow cinephiles, film guru here. So for now on I'll be known as the 90s film guru. As you can tell by the title of this video, I'm gonna be focusing on everything 90s, especially the movies and TV shows. And I'll be also looking at particular books and book comparisons between movies and the book themselves. This decade's always been a, a favorite of mine. I really love this particular decade in regards to um, movies and music and, and a variety of other things. And I kind of grew up in this era, so that's hence why I'm doing this particular channel. I just feel there's so many reviewers out there doing the same sort of things. So I just want to try something different and this is what I came up with. When I say movies of the 90s, are we also looking at movies from 1989, which is sort of the beginning of the, the, the 90s, and also into 2000, which is the end of the 90s. There are already a handful of films in those particular years, but I want to focus on them because there is so many more movies I want to talk about. As well as doing normal reviews, I'll be also looking at doing um, top 10s of each year, as well as top 10 romantic comedies and top 10 horrors, as are the genres I enjoy the most and know a lot about. We're also doing some like retrospectives of particular filmmakers and actors and looking at their filmography within this period and really talking about the impact that they had on me or the impact they had on cinema and their careers at this time. So what I'll be doing with these particular reviews is sort of breaking them down. I'll be talking about behind the scenes information that I found and, and things that transpire with the, the production of the particular movies. Then looking at plot, characters, and then sort of what I thought about and then breaking it down slowly and giving my final thoughts on that particular film. Feeling I want to do much more of a structured review than I have been doing. Anyway, without further ado, here's first cab off the rank, SFW, also known as So Fucking What. This, was, this film came out in 1994. The film was based on a book that came out in 1991, and it's sort of really, like I said, looking at what it means to be a celebrity these days. The film focuses on Cliff Spad, played by Stephen Dorff, in one of his standout performances in my regard. I think he's fantastic. He's an actor who really should have taken off, but he just hasn't. And I just think this is a great example of his talent as a, an actor who remind, he reminded me a lot of Christian Slater in this particular film. So Cliff Spab is a, a guy who, with his friend Joe, go to a convenience store just to pick up some beers and only become mixed up in a whole thing where they're held hostage. These hostage, the, this group that are holding them hostage start to film them. Unaware that the footage that is being recorded is being broadcast to the wider world. They are held captive for 36 days. After they break free of that, it sort of focuses on Cliff Spab in hospital and this scene is a lot of people talking to the camera, like as if he's the camera. That reminded me a lot of Clockwork Orange, especially when Malcolm McDowell's character is held, is in the hospital bed and all these people are talking to him. And it really looks at how Cliff is surprised that he's become this celebrity after this tragic event. And he puts on this sort of facade where it's this so fucking what attitude where he doesn't seem to care about anything, but it's a facade. It's, it's put up to protect him, to keep a distance from the experience he had to shut off that terrible thing that happened to him. But to everybody else, he just seems like the normal same spab. He's back and life can go on, but he really struggles to, to come back from what's happened to him. And the only person he really feels connection to is Reese Witherspoon's Wendy. But they're kept apart through most of the film. It is until Spab makes a decision and puts on a concert that he runs into Wendy. And it's really about the relationship that forms between these two through the event that happened and after it and how they feel so connected to each other. And that's really the heart of the story. I feel a lot of, in a lot of ways this film is ahead of its time. It really looks at being a celebrity and how these days it's so easy to become a celebrity. But it also looks at how that celebrity being a celebrity can quickly be taken away from that person and they can be replaced by somebody else. So I think that's what was really great about this ahead of its time, a real commentary on that particular aspect of what it is to be famous and the events and, and, and what events lead to that. And especially if they become, especially though, and especially if those events were very traumatic, like the R for Cliff Spab and Wendy in this film. I must admit, this is a very odd film. It sort of walks the line between drama and comedy. There is a lot of humour in the film, and I would say it's a black satire type movie. 
But some of the dramatic things are pretty full on, especially when you get to see through flashbacks of what happened to them when they were held captive in this convenience store and how they were able to break free and, and how that had a real impact on them. And I like sort of when you see Cliff Spab to begin with, when he's held captive, how he's silent. He doesn't know what to make of it and he's in shock. And then that's when he creates his persona. And by creating this persona, he's able to separate himself from the situation and treat it like it's some sort of fun, you know, entertaining game or some sort of TV show. And that's the only way he can deal with it. There was a review by Roger Ebert. This is what he said about the film. SFW is the kind of movie to inspire members of Generation X to lie about their age. To It qualifies Forrest Gump for a genius grant. It's a portrait of the most singularly stupid, obnoxious character ever seen on, screen in many, on, the, on the screen in many a day, which could be promising if, if he were not boring as well. Now, I disagree with that. I, I agree with the first part of it, that it is sort of inspiring to that particular Generation X in this time, especially in the early 90s. But I disagree that he's a boring, obnoxious character. I, like I've been saying, it's a facade. He puts up this sort of wall to protect himself and he comes across that way, but that's not really who he is. And you can see that throughout the film, especially when he's reminded of certain things that happened, from, from recordings or whatever or interviews, and he starts to remember what happened, and he's sort of really, that's who he really is. And the overconfident sort of persona he puts on is protection. And that's really what I got from, that's why I think Stephen Dorff's performance is really great in this, because he goes from sort of shock and awe to, and dramatic aspects to his performance, as well as sort of entertaining and fun. And I think he's really great in this film. This film really is a commentary on um, what it is to be a celebrity, how easy it is to become a celebrity these days. But this was done in 94, so it was a bit of ahead of its time in that regard, but about how people just accept people as celebrities by some tragic event that happens to them and they're easily replaced. And this film was kind of overshadowed by Reality Bites, the Ben Stiller film starring Ethan Hawke and, and Mona Ryder, the film that really made her a star. But they're very different films, but they are talking about similar things, not necessarily the celebrity aspect of it, but what it is to be part of a world and a small town in that particular time period. There's an interesting story I read about it where the director actually screened it for Kurt Cobain, who really liked it. It was like a connection. He really connected to the character and the story. And that makes sense because he was like Cliff Spab, he was thrown into the limelight, not expecting to be in the way he was. And he didn't know quite what to make of it or how to deal with his situation he was in. And it became all overwhelming for him. And that's the very similar, that's very similar to, the, to Cliff himself. Like I mentioned, this is definitely a standout for Stephen Dorff. He, he's an actor who did some interesting roles, and I'm surprised he wasn't bigger than he was, because he did go on to play Deacon Frost in Blade, which I thought he was a really good villain. A lot of people don't like that. But he sort of comes from that generation of when there was Ethan Hawke and Christian Slater and, and actors like this, Keanu Reeves, who sort of came onto the screen and had a particular way of acting and a particular way of being. And I thought that was really interesting and he's definitely part of that sort of group. I thought Reese Witherspoon was quite good in this film. I th apparently she was sort of young when this movie came out and, and when she, she was kind of young in this movie. And she plays a 17 year old Wendy who, along with Spab, doesn't know how to ex what to say or what to do, but, she, but she's dealing with transpired with them much better than he is. And like him and like Cliff, Wendy feels that she, Cliff is the only one that understands what they've been through. In some ways it reminded me of Natural Born Killers, not in the violence or the, the graphicness or the craziness of that particular film, but just like the impact that these particular characters were having on the world at large and how we, we saw those characters within inhabiting that, those worlds and the real satire on commentary on society. I think it's a fascinating film, it's got some really great 
sequences in it, some early performances, and you know, before they were famous sort of roles, especially for Tobey Maguire, who's playing sort of a Beavis and Butthead character, a stoner who interacts with Cliff, I kind of like that. I just found it overall a very engaging and interesting film. I was drawn into that world and I wanted to see what happened to Cliff and I cared about him even though he was putting on his facade that where he's pushing everything and everybody away. I still enjoyed what he was doing in the film. And, and I think he's just an actor that is really cool. Like, I just wanted to see more of him and I just, was surprised by his performance here that he wasn't bigger than he ultimately became. In closing, I really liked the film. I don't know if it's gonna be for everyone. If you're a fan of nostalgic 90s movies that has a bit of a message and a bit of a commentary on society, or you're really into the grunge or 90s look and lifestyle, this is definitely worth checking out. I'd give SFW three and a half out of five as I liked it and I thought it was clever. It was a little too odd at times, but I still enjoyed it. Anyway, that's all for me today. I hope you're enjoying this, this new look of the channel and I hope you continue on watching my videos. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.